All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, it's Wednesday, December 2nd. This meeting is uh, present this afternoon. Myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Helen Kahn, and Brian Campadelli. This meeting is being recorded. Do we have anybody for public comment hiding? Is there anyone else here, Annie? Uh, no. Okay. Moving on, item number three, application for change of manager on an annual all alcohol in holder license, Ellery Server, LLC, DBA, the Ellery, 259 Elm Street, previous manager, Hope Kalish, proposed manager, Barbara Sheehan. Did you expect them to come? Yes, and I just checked my email and she just emailed me and she, oh, she, she sent a Google Meet link instead of the Zoom link. Hold on one second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, um, so I sent her the link. I don't know if you want to move to number four. Okay, report number four, report from building commissioner on annual liquor license inspections. Yeah, all I was going to do was just read the report for the record and you guys can, I guess, just listen along. Um, so as of December 2nd, the fire department and building department have completed the first and second rounds of inspections for the 2021 on-premises liquor licenses and have begun re-inspections. They have inspected 63 of the 65 on-premises establishments, 49 have passed, three have been issued 30-day temporary certificates, 11 have outstanding issues and two have not been inspected. Um, the ones that have not been inspected have been contacted and reminded about the importance of the inspection. And the 11 that need reinspections anticipate finishing by December 8th. Um, none of the outstanding issues are significant and they anticipate all establishments will have passed inspections before the year is over. Okay. Uh, there's a few not getting inspections. Mama Iguanas is not getting an inspection because there's some serious ansel cleaning it needs, uh, which is costly, but they're not opening anytime soon. So um, they have been instructed before they open that they need an inspection. And same thing with Bishop's Lounge. They're not even allowed to open. So, um, and they had some significant upgrades they needed to make, I think it was to the fire alarm system. So they are not being inspected until they reopen either. Okay. But that's, that's it for that. There's, there's really no, no serious issues with that. Okay. Thank you for the update. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say we can move back to three if you'd like. Okay, great. Moving back to three, the application for change of manager on an annual all alcohol inholder license. We have somebody here for that now. Yes. Hi, Barbara there. Hi how are Hi. you? Good, how are you? Great, thank you. Great. And so you are here to become the proposed manager for, or become the manager for the Ellery. That's correct. That's correct. And Annie, all the paperwork was in order, right? Yes. Okay. Have you run an in before? I'm just curious. Yes, I'm, I'm the area general manager for Charleston Hotel. So I oh, run great. another hotel as well. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. Cool. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions? None. No, I do not. No. I have no further questions either. Would someone like to make a motion? Before we do that, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was telling Helen before um, everyone else was on the call that I was researching open meeting law in, in the times of COVID and apparently all uh, recorded meetings need a roll call vote. So after there's a, a motion and a second, I will call the roll and you will say yay or nay. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. So, um, so I'll make a motion to approve the application for change of manager on an annual all al alcohol inholder license um, as detailed in item two of the agenda. A second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. So, I guess this Aye. Roll call. <laughs> so, yeah, so Brian, Brian. Brian. Yes. Helen. Yeah. Oh, I. Do I just say yes? I. Either one. I'm okay. Natasha. I. <laughs> Thank you. So you, you do that after the all in favor part, or do we no, skip? You don't even have to do the all in favor okay. part. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Barbara. Yes. Thank First. you. Good luck. Yeah. Good Thank luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Bye now. Bye. Okay, item number five, request approval of annual 2021 liquor license renewals and discussion of renewal issues, annual package store licenses and annual liquor licenses contingent upon certificate of inspection with the following exceptions, Brew Practitioners LLC, Freedom Post 28 Incorporated DBA American Legion, KNC Chung Incorporated DBA Great Wall Restaurant, Kung Bao LLC DBA Taipei and, Ta and Tokyo, and Teapot Restaurant Incorporated. Okay, so um, for this one, we're going to need two votes one on the package stores and one on the all alcohol or the on premise. Um, you can scratch the bottom four off the list Teapot, Taipei, Great Wall, and American Legion. Those, those issues have been resolved. Um, the only one is brew practitioners. Um, they're the only establishment that is refusing to pay the renewal fee. Um, they submitted the paperwork, but is not going to pay the fee. Um, I guess part of the, part of the issue was that it was a new, cause it's a new fee this year. We imposed a new fee back in January for pouring permits. Um, so they feel like they were blindsided maybe. So um, with that said, the other three establishments that have pouring permits with the new fee, um, those were all paid. Um, so I guess you'll have to decide whether or not you wanna renew it. Um, I did let them know that failure to pay the renewal fee would might result in a lapse of license if it doesn't get renewed. So um, it's up to you three to decide whether what you want to do with it. And what type of communication was there when we voted for that fee? Where did people receive notice of that? And yes, they did. They received a letter and they also received a reminder when I sent out the um, their 2020 licenses. So this must have been in December that we decided. Um, so I had, oh. Lost the name. <laughs> I just need to mark that on the minutes. Um, oh, he's trying to get back in, it looks like. Um, yeah, there he is. Oh, OK. Um, so yes, so there was a, an initial letter letting everyone know, and then there was a reminder in the packet that I send out with the new license for the year and like a calendar and some other letters. And how much was the fee? I don't remember. It was seven seventy five, which was half of the wine and malt fee, and then with the twenty five percent discount, it was five eighty one twenty five. So. I'm Previously, they were paying no fee then for renewal. They don't just had an annual renewal. This, this, this happened, this was the year that last, well, last December, you guys had imposed a fee on pouring permits. So this was the first renewal season that it has been in effect, okay. unfortunately, bad timing. Right, right. Um, but so their argument was this came out of nowhere or in the time um, of this is on there was. You know what, let me, you know what, let me send you, I guess I maybe I should have sent this earlier, but I didn't, yeah. Um, it was this kind of this long drawn out email. Um, 
I mean, they also haven't been allowed to open, right? Is that? Uh, I guess they're doing curbside and brewing. Um, there have also been, there are also establishments like Union Stations only open like by a third. Bishop's Lounge has been closed. Yield Watering Hole has been closed. Uh, the Majestic has been closed. I mean, there's a lot of the places that don't serve food aren't allowed to open until phase four. So they've been closed since March. Right. And yeah. they still, they're still paying the renewal fees though. Yeah, I mean, every everyone paid. Yeah. So essentially what we're deciding is that they cannot renew. If they don't pay the fee, they can't renew. And then for all of next year, they can't pour. Is essentially what we're saying, right? I mean, can yes, they but they would have the ability to reapply for another, a new pouring permit in the future. Okay, so it could be, I'm sorry, like if, if they're allowed to open in May, then they could reapply at that, that time. They that, could reapply and go through the process of getting a new pouring permit. And that would just have to line up with them getting paperwork to you in time to be on our agenda. Yes. It, okay. Have them been notified of that? I'm sorry? Have they been notified that they yes. have to reapply? They don't pay? Yes. Okay. yes. But then there was the long explanation email that I just forwarded to you all. So that was what came after I basically said, it's not gonna get renewed or it may not yeah. get renewed. Yeah, so she's essentially saying because of their loss of income that they can't pay it, but then she um, does not think that the 25% discount is sufficient. And it's not, and it's uh, like, I but it's, it's, it's like the cities also needs to have revenue. And I mean, yeah, I mean, we went through that at the previous meeting. I know we all wish that we could, uh, <laughs> that we could waive more. But, um, and is she aware, I mean, she says also in the email, um, she finds it incredible that the commission would initiate this fee during this time. Is she, aware that this fee was, this happened pre-COVID and we had no idea? Yeah, so I didn't wanna get into a back and forth match with her. Um, and I, so I kind of wanted to talk, this was only, this was earlier today. So I kind of wanted to just talk to you guys. And yep. I, 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 yeah. I mean, some of the facts that she puts in her email are incorrect. I mean, if there's no, if, if when she's ready to reopen, it's, there's no major delay in her reapplying and getting approval from us, then I, that makes the most sense to me. Wait until she's ready to reopen. I am seeing in her email too, at the end, very long, short story, which is where I skipped to. Um, <laughs> it was smart. I didn't get to that point. <laughs> yeah, she would request request a waiver for the fee to be paid at a prorated amount 30 days after I'm allowed to open for business so that I may earn money to pay for it, which I totally understand, but I don't know if that, if we have the um, ability to do that. So she's saying I'd like to open, make money, and then pay the fee, um, you know, after at a prorated paid. amount though, for yeah. only a period of time, right. open, which is, oh, right, 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 which also, it, yes, which it really makes sense, but it's not fair to the people who've already paid. Right. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I don't know why I talk to you guys like I have a stake in the matter because I don't. <laughs> I don't but <laughs> right. Um. Do, uh, so, are they able to operate at any capacity without this? They can do. They can what brew they now, right? They or can brew. Now. They just can't like poor for people to come in but like people can't come in right because they don't so they don't have a kitchen 
Right. So they can brew and they're, so they're brewing and doing bottles. curbside pickup for yeah. beer. Uh, and so even when we open the bars, that's essentially how they'd have to continue until they pay the fee for the year is sort of how the <laughs> legalities work in that, right? Sounds like. I don't understand the question. Um, sorry, sorry. So even the, like if in May the bar or whenever in April the bars are allowed to open, she cannot open until, so what we're saying is she cannot open until she reapplies and pays the fee up front. Is, that's the yeah, decision. she wouldn't. For um, the year, for the with the farmer brewer permit from the state, which also building a brewery has, they can pour like up to a certain amount. It's like a really small amount for like taste testing. Um, so she could do that. And that's included in her state license. But in order to pour for like on-premise consumption, like glasses, they, she would need the pouring permit. Right. And so who else has the pouring permit? Um, Middlefields? Mineral Hills Winery, Pine, uh, Progression Brewing Company, and Artifact Cider. Both of whom have food, so they're able to be open. Okay, Progression. And they've all Mineral paid. Mineral Hills doesn't sound like it, because aren't they're like more of like a venue. Right, yeah, you're right. They, have, they don't have food. Yeah. But they've all paid it? They've all paid. Everyone has paid. Yeah, so they've paid it, but they are also open, able to be open, right? Is what we're and saying. Except for Mineral are, Hills. one of them are. Mineral Hills, we're yeah. not sure. Well, yeah, because isn't it kind of like an indoor, outdoor entertainment? Like, I, it don't is, know, I mean, it, it's like Glendale Ridge, which is in Southampton, and they allow people to tailgate. They don't provide food, but you can purchase oh. bottles and tailgate on their property. Well, Mineral Hills does not have a common Vic, so they don't have food. Right. They provide, the other one provides food when they hire or let like the, uh, the pizza vendor and, um, you know, the sandwich, right. they have food. So I don't know if that helps them qualify, but they do have food up there. Which one are you talking about for practitioners or the Mineral Hill? No, not the Mineral, the one that, um, Natasha. Um, yeah, no, I was just mentioning Glendale Ridge is because oh. they don't always have a food truck, but um, Black right. Ridge does have a food truck, so that's how they're able to do it. I and Progression you. could do the same. Right. Yes. So Mineral Hills is open for sales by the glass, wine flights, wine slushies, and snack trays. Hmm. I don't know what how the artifact, are. artifact is essentially snack food that you get, yeah. that they prepare there. Like they do a crudité platter and a couple other simply prepared things. So, I mean, if it seems if everybody else, I mean, I understand her frustration. Um, but it doesn't seem fair to prorate one license holder and not the others, especially when, or if one of them, if Mineral Hills does a food truck thing. And um, brew practitioners is, there was a very long and they've been having issues with the Board of Health. Yep. I'm sure you're all aware from yeah. Facebook, um, but there's been some pretty, yeah, just a lot of conversations, but all in all, they are allowed to op open if they have a food truck on mm -hmm. site. So they have they have that option as does Mineral Hills. Yep. To, I mean, it may not be relevant to this conversation. I'm just wondering about when she's talking about this, um, the additional equipment that she's been asked to install that she didn't have to before. Is yeah, that... I don't know what that's about. I can check with the building department about that. Like she, it looks like she had some, I don't know, grandfathered in for something with the fire department. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, and I can see her misunderstanding that this was a, a new fee because it wasn't actually implemented last year. We voted on it last year. 
and it's a new I, fee for this year, but right. it's we gave about a year notice. Right. And then COVID. I mean, I certainly understand the yeah, I mean, where she's coming from. It's like, oh, well, you're gonna you're actually actually gonna implement this for the first time this year, even though yes, we of course didn't decide on this. We didn't um, know that this was gonna be happening. Right. And I know this yeah, this way out there. We can't say we didn't know COVID was going to happen. You don't actually have to pay the fee this year and then reimburse those other four. Would that be a huge mistake to do that? I mean, because, right, it's four, including her, that it's only those three other businesses and her that this applies to. Mm -hmm. and her practitioner. What's the fee? What is the fee amount? With the what do you mean? It their new, the new fee that we're imposing is it uh, according to their sales like a no it's because program? they were the only liquor license in all of northampton liquor licenses that didn't have a hefty renewal fee oh, they right. they had a it was a free license right we do i remember that yeah <clears throat> and then with the 25% discount that we were able to do because of COVID, it brings it down to 581. Which, and when you have no money, it's a lot of money. I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, it, and it's just tricky because they, since those other two are in a different situation where they actually can operate, not that anyone's going gangbusters right now at all. Um, but I don't know if we can retroactively, or is this set a bad precedent, say, Yes. I mean, if they want to talk about fair, I mean, stating that you can only open food. Which... Yeah, which is out of our hands. I mean, that, you know, we can't do it. That's a statewide initiative. Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't hear any of that. Brian, can you repeat what you said? Well, I mean, uh, what I think is totally unfair is the fact that the state says if you don't serve food, you can't open. But if you serve food, you can go in and take your mask off. It's the most ridiculous rule or law that I've, or suggestion, period. I mean, it's hurting these other people that, you know, have a viable point to try and stay in business. And it's like forcing them out of their uh, comfort zone to, to compete or, or stay viable. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's four or five poor licenses. And I get your point, you know, you want revenue for the city, but you know, we never charged it before. Does the city need it with COVID? I mean, everybody's taking a, a kick in the pants, you know, with this. So I don't but know. Part of the conversation when it came up last December was the fairness out of having businesses like, you know, progression as an example, doing real, doing, I don't know what their numbers were, of course, but doing similar business to the brewery and the brewery was paying a much heftier license or have to your fee to be able to do that but i thought the brewery had a full alcohol license they have, i'm just in terms of the 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 brewing your own stuff and serving and serving a full pour of it there was we didn't see a difference yeah so I wanted to create some equity there no and i'm all for it but i mean their valid point being first of all the the governor setting the you know the food situation versus no food I think it's wrong. Um, that's just my opinion. But if you're allowed in and taking your mask off in a building, but you can't go get a beer, I mean, I don't know. You're still consuming. So um, to punish well, people for that is, and I know it's out of our control, but you know, to punish right, people. Whether we agree with that or not, it, that's out of our hands. Understood. But where we do have the power is if we even need to implement this, you know, fee um or do you want to have a heart so to speak and let it go one more year or do your discounts across the board i don't know well the three of three of the people are paid yeah i understand that those people are doing well clearly right well i don't know if they are but i mean i don't know but what the question is what do we do about you know if we let one slide what do we do about the three well, no, you'd have to do what you do for one, you do for all. I mean, there's, that's, I don't know, that's the fairest way. So, I mean, if there's a discount, you know, and there's money due back to the people that paid on the discount, then 
you know, so be it. So, I mean, the city's not hurting for money. I still pay my taxes and I'm sure everybody else does. So this, this little bit of money is not going to break or make anything special, you know, um, given the circumstances of COVID and what it's doing to everyone. So, and I think you guys were talking already about a 25% discount. And then they're saying that's not enough. Is that what, what I'm hearing? Because I, I hear you guys spotty like robots once in a while. I can't, I, I, I can't hear everything. So my service here is not the best. So, so it seems, and I, I mean, I had initially, I had brought up that sort of what Brian was saying, I guess in terms of our options, I guess I was asking, is it even an option that we would consider at this point? And I don't know the legalities of it to say, we didn't expect COVID was going to happen this year. We are going to actually waive that pouring fee we're, or we're going to put it into 2021, um, which would of course mean that necessitate paying those three uh, establishments back. Is that even something that's feasible to do? Is that something that has been done or could be done? Is that even an option for us to discuss? I guess that's my first question to say that. I mean, I mean. That would be the mayor. I would say that's probably the mayor. <laughs> I mean, like logistically, yeah. I mean, we could either, whether they paid online, we could do a refund or whether they submitted a check, we could just reimburse or we could cut a check, I guess. I mean, that could happen. I, I guess I don't. There's the fairness issue, I guess, too. Well, the, the, the easier thing instead of cutting checks back is give the, the people that paid in full the pass in 2021 and the people that need the, the pass now take it and then you pay in 2021. I mean, and if they're all okay with that, I, I see how they would be like, oh my God, what's going on? No, I think, I, I mean, you know? if it were me, I'd want my money back now because who knows what's going to happen in the yeah. future <laughs> instead of a guarantee for next year. No, you're right. Um, you're right. But, but I don't know if that creates waves. I don't know if that's better or worse. I mean, I could, um, I guess, defend it by saying, I know when we, and I think, Brian, you weren't at the meeting when we had the discussion about the 25% discount. But that was, our hands were essentially tied to keep it, to not raise it above 25%. And I know that we wanted to be able to. This is sort of one way that we can do right. potentially something where we can cut a break that we weren't allowed to break, give, unfortunately, other restaurants um, with that 25%. Right. Like, is this something that we actually do have control over that we can say, this has been a terrible year and here's a thing we can do at least for these four establishments. I don't know if that would right, be because, and I think, picture. and I think only because we're implementing a new fee, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if the other establishments, establishments complain, we just say, there's nothing new to you. This is your fee. It's always been your fee. This is just something new that, you know, came up. Yeah, there was a year different uh, notice, but it is COVID. So you're right, though. It opens up a can of worms. Annie, you know, you give something back to one person, they all want it. So it's it could be a nightmare as well. And you're the front line. So you get all those calls. I mean, I have to say, I wish it were more crystal clear like that nobody was serving food and no one had been open of those right. four. <laughs> you know, I mean, I but, but, you know, that's not something we can control either. Well, it seems based on what Annie said that we can do that. We can either refund what they've the three have paid, or we can waive twenty twenty one. But I hear what Helen is saying. I'd want the money as well, especially yeah. ten months into the pandemic. Yeah, I agree. So I mean, so it seems our options today are we can say we're going to do this and re and refund these three. Um, the, uh, and then option number two is we tell her we're not giving you um, this license, but when you're ready to reapply, reapply, and you have to pay in full for the year at the discount rate. And then you'll get another email back. <laughs> but um, right, so those are essentially our two options. Is that, am I laying that out correctly? 
What was the second option? That well, the second option is sort of what I think we had yeah. expected, which was to say that, no, you're not going to get your license right now if you don't pay. And when you are ready to open, you have to reapply and pay up front, and it has to be for the year. Or it could maybe even be 30 days after or something, but it sounds like she'd have to pay for the year, even if it was May or something that she reapplied. Um, I mean, so when we have that option to prorate it. I mean, we then there's maybe option number three. Do we have that power to do essentially what she's asking and prorate it for the year when she reapplies? Or is that just... So when new licenses come to be, they don't pay anything. They only pay in November. Oh. So oh. even like Artifact got their pouring permit, I think in August, so they, they don't pay anything until the renewal time comes around. Oh, so this may be a non-issue now that I've complicated it. So, okay, so if right now she said, I'm not paying for it, we say, okay, you don't have a license. When you are ready to open, you need to reapply. She reapplies, let's say it's May. You're saying at that time, she doesn't actually pay anything. The only thing she pays is a $25 administrative fee to the city and a $200 administrative fee to the ABCC. And then she pays nothing until November. Oh, well, that's, I think that simplifies things. I think I wasn't you know that? aware of that. I, I thought that, you know, that we were saying, oh, you can't do this per rated amount, you know, but essentially she's paying nothing. I mean, it's a genius workaround, isn't it? For, I mean, I have to say for her to do that. Right. She should just apply immediately for a new license. <laughs> I mean, we don't necessarily have to so. say that to her, but you can say, what, so if, if today you could say like, you know, we aren't issuing you a new license when you are ready to reapply, this is the steps you take. You know, mm -hmm. the fees you would have to pay to reapply. Yep. Right? I, I mean, but it is, you're saying this now, so it's essentially an extra 200 that she other, 225 that she wouldn't otherwise. 25 total instead of 581, yeah. or 25. So maybe that's why, I'm sorry. I feel like we had this long discussion and now I'm backtracking because I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. So. Does that seem like it would be the simplest to say that? And then just explain that. Here's the process and, and the fees associated with reapplying whenever you choose to do that. Yeah, she, I think she already knows that because I told her. And then in the email, um, I realized, wow, I didn't read all, well, <laughs> I'm now going back on her email. I didn't get through the whole thing. But. She said that she said, please know that I realize the extra measures I just take in effort to get a lapse license pouring permit reissued. Oh, did I not read that? Yeah, I guess I haven't read this whole thing either. It's like the first sentence in the Oh, I just take an effort to I don't really understand that sentence. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it makes sense. We do have a I think she, I think it's just a typo. She knows that yeah. there's extra measures it, it takes to, in, the, in your effort to get a lapsed permit reissued. Yeah. yeah. I think she's just acknowledging the work on your part, Annie. Oh, okay. That, you know, that it's just, it's out of sequence when it will happen, when she'll come back for it and that she recognizes that that's more work. Okay. I mean, I guess that's the, I mean, she's not pouring. She's not going to be pouring for a while. When she's ready, she'll reapply and it'll probably be around the same time that everybody else is, right? Right. So, do we need to vote on anything for that? I don't think we do, do we? Because she hasn't applied. Um, well, yeah, so there's going to be three votes. There's going to be one for package stores, renewing those, because I have everything for those. And then there's going to be one for renewing the annual liquor licenses contingent upon certificate of inspection. And then there's going to be another one to disapprove brew practitioners for failure to make payments. 
Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. You did reapply. Okay. Oh, she reapplied but didn't pay. Okay. 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 Well, I'll make a I'll make a motion for the first one. I uh, move to approve renewal for the annual package store licenses. Second. And now I'll call a roll. Um, it is fine. Uh, Natasha? Aye. Helen? Aye. And Brian? Aye. Okay. okay. So now, yep, go ahead. Oh, the second one was to approve the annual liquor licenses for the lap bottom four? Uh, no, just all uh, on-premise liquor licenses. Oh, okay. Contingent upon inspection. Okay, then I will make a motion to approve all annual liquor licenses contingent upon certification of inspection of premise. And we don't have to say with the exception of in that one? Perfect. Actually, yeah, maybe we should include that with the exceptions of that the final four were all set though. Just, well, oh. just the exception of just brief practitioners, right? Was that a third vote or can that be wrapped in? Wrapped in. Oh, okay, great. Um, then I make a motion to approve the annual liquor licenses contingent upon certificate of inspection with the exception of brew practitioners. Thank you. Uh, uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Brian? Last one. Brian? Yes. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Hello. Okay. So, so do we still we still need to see me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, do we still need to make a third specifically denying brew practitioners, or is it enough that? Um, yes, because we need to we need to report on what grounds. Oh, okay. Then so do I, I make a motion yeah. to deny the annual uh, liquor license or wine and malt license? Um, of brew practitioners LLC on the grounds that they have not paid for their pouring fee. Is that correct? Okay. I'll second that. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Brian? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving on then. Item number six, request approval to renew and issue 2021 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for common victualler, auto amusement, entertainment, in-holder, lodging, and car dealer class one, two, and three. Yep, so I'm just requesting approval to once I've gotten all paperwork to um, send out their new licenses. The deadline isn't until next Friday, um, but we're not meeting again until January, so they'll need their license. Okay. I think we already decided to let you do that, didn't we? Um, I know you gave me authority during outdoor seating to approve, oh. um, but I usually, I ask for it every year after okay. your permission. Anybody have any issues with that? Nope. Then I will make a motion to approve the ability for the clerk to renew and issue 2021 licenses pending receipt of all appropriate documents for the licenses outlined in item number six. Okay. Anybody want a second? Oh, second. Okay, uh, Nat Natasha? Aye. Helen? Aye. Brian? Aye. Thank you. Item seven, clerk's update. 2021 renewal certification and Sierra Grill liquor license lottery. So the renewal certification I sent you um, the other day, it had the only one that's being, um, that failed to renew is Convino, but 
they had renewed last year in hopes to sell and so that's just not renewing. Um, also, fish hook, which I just remembered to put on there. The fish hook is not renewing their license either because um, they went out of business. Um, and then now I will add brew practitioners below to where it says disapproved. So there will be three. What did I just say? And you'll electronically sign that, Annie? Yes, I will. Okay. Um, anything else on that? No. Okay. Sierra Grill update. Um, just that um, we're going to have to do this in January after the holidays. There's just, I just don't have enough bandwidth right now, um, yeah. honestly. And I just want to make sure it's, I do give it my all and enough put enough research and time into it. Um, other than that, I know, Helen, you had asked whether or not the reason that the mayor went to the state was it because that the people that lost were angry? You remember asking oh, that? Right, 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 right. Yes, yes, why did he get more? So I, I asked the mayor and that, that was the reason that he went to get more was because people didn't get the lottery license which isn't the greatest answer, but. Right, which is interesting. Reason. So I mean, that was a, the reason. if people remember history, there's a chance they could do that again. You know, right, I mean, I know that's not for us to say, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, but uh, yeah. yeah I, don't think, I don't think you guys should have to worry about that. That's a mayor political move. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so that totally makes sense for to do that next year. I mean, I don't think anyone has the bandwidth. I mean, I know we know one individual is ready to jump on it right now, but um, <laughs> but I think also in terms of getting the information out there, yeah, we need to do it yeah. in the, the proper way so that everyone uh, is advised about what's happening with that. So. Yeah. So does that mean when would you when would the notice go into the paper then? Uh, so I still I still need to talk to Attorney Seawald about how we notify whether I just send an email to all wine and malt holders. That's what we narrow right. it down to, or what I just I just need to touch base with him about the requirements of notification. Okay. But I will keep you all updated on that. Um, item number eight: new business. Um, this isn't on the agenda, but, um, the meeting schedule for next year, um, we haven't decided on one. I didn't know if we wanted to keep Wednesday at four, Brian, it seemed that this time, time doesn't maybe work for you anymore. Wednesday, the first Wednesday at four. Um, I didn't know if anybody had any thoughts about a different day or, or what, so I'm yeah, truthfully, the um, four o'clock never worked for me. I just always left work and went to the meeting. So, um, I mean, I work till dark, so I just, I keep going. So either way, it doesn't matter to me. Any time is not going to be better than the next, so. Well, I think attendance is kind of an issue. So, it you know, is there, are, are mornings better? Yeah, before COVID, attendance was not an issue for me. So um, it was not having a laptop with a camera that worked in my office, which now I do, but I'm doing, re I was trying remote desktop. It didn't work. So the last couple have been on my phone and I didn't know I could do it on my phone until, you know, I don't know, a few months back. So. <clears throat> So if, if Wednesdays at four has never been a good time for you though, is there a time in your schedule that would work better? I mean, that's now's the time to discuss it. Um, you know, all of my appointments I make during the mornings, but that's for me and my business. So 
you know, I don't want to be the guy that, uh, or the person, so to speak, sorry, that um, throws a, uh, a monkey wrench into anything. So if four o'clock is the stable, once we're allowed to meet in person again, you know, it, it goes into my schedule just like that. And now um, it's just, I don't have the means with the laptop and the emails and everything all the time with me. So um, generally I can show right up in the paperwork's there, you know how it is. So, or maybe you don't, I run three businesses, so I'm a very busy person. Helen, do you have any um, um, time I'm constraints in your busy life? I mean, I've been flexible. I never know how, if that's gonna change in the future, um, but, I, is moving it a little bit later in the day, does that, Annie, does that mess you up? Like if it's, I don't even know if five is better for people or not, just so it's not, and I don't know if that helps you, Brian, moving in an hour or does that make it very difficult? I mean, it's, it's worked for me so far, so I guess I, yeah. but um, I didn't know if moving it back an hour would help or hurt. Yeah, winter, like go, going into winter, it's not a problem ever for me unless it's snowing then I just, I won't be there because I have to, I have to plow. But, um, you know, so that's not a big deal. It's like spring is tough, but you know, if we went to five o'clock, quite honestly, one hour, it's not going to make a heck of a difference. I mean, when it, when it gets dark at eight 30 at night and I tell you that I truly work till dark, usually, you know what I mean? I just leave the meeting and I go back to, to work sometimes. So, um, when COVID's over, it was great because, the way I scheduled it was I left our meetings and went right to the Chamber of Commerce um, networking events and that worked out well. So I'll handle it. So just hope this uh, virus is cured pretty soon. That would be nice for everyone. But. So... Is that um, where are we going to stay at that time? Or I guess yeah, I don't really. I, I would say stay at that time because if life ever does go back to normal, um, the, uh, you know, and I can go network at the chamber event, I want to get out there. It starts at five o'clock. So most times we're done, uh, you know, within enough time where I go to that. So. So Brian, is there anything I can do for you to make licensing easier for you? Like, I know you, you say you don't have the paperwork and all that, and I, is there anything I can do? Yeah, I mean, I don't have, like where I'm at, I don't have a printer, um, you know, at this point, but uh, when I get back home, you know, it's, it's usually, it's decent. I have the paperwork I can print out in my office. So um, that shouldn't be a big deal. If, if, it, if there is, and I think of anything, I'll uh, reach out to you via text or email. Okay. So does, assuming you're back in town next month, then can you resume chairing the meetings? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's plan on that. Okay. All right. So schedule resuming on the first Wednesday of every month at four. Um, let me just see when. So our next meeting will be Wednesday, January 6th at four. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Any other new business? I have nothing. Anybody else? Nope. All righty. Then I will make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. <laughs> Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Brian? Yes. Thank you.